Hello and welcome. Today I thought I'd show you this Hitex 7138 compound feed walking foot industrial sewing machine. Now this is a reasonably heavy weight machine, relatively, and I thought I'd just go through, uh, show you what the machine's capable of and some of the basics today. And uh, apologies uh, for any background noise I'm recording in the garage today, so you might hear a few aircraft uh, flying over, dogs maybe barking, and uh, birds maybe. So this is a brand new machine, and we've got a quality control uh, label here. It's got the model number, machine number, the inspector, and the date of the survey, so April 2021. So we'll get straight down to threading the machine and I'll give you a demo of it sewing. I'm using this, uh, it's just a, an old reel of thread I had here, just a sort of a gold sort of jeans type uh, thread. It's a 35 weight, so I'm just placing the cone on the, on the stand there. I'll also put this other cone here on for the bobbin winder so I can show you the bobbin winding as well. Normally you'd have the same colour thread on, but this is just a demonstration, so I'll thread that up as well. So I'll have white down on the bobbin winder, and I'll have this gold thread on the needle here. And that'll just wind through until it's full. It'll pop off automatically. So you can actually wind a bobbin while you're sewing. Uh, so it just needs a slight adjustment there. Get a little bit more thread on that. The adjustment is made with a Phillips screwdriver here. You screw it in to uh, put more thread on the bobbin or unscrew it to have less there. But we'll probably get, probably could have got a bit more on there. What you can do is you can load another bobbin and that will wind while you're sewing. That way you've got always got a full bobbin available. Okay, now we thread the bobbin case here. I'm just reaching under the uh, machine on the left hand side. I'll tip the machine back and show you what I'm actually doing there, but I'm just extracting the bobbin case here. It's a side loading uh, large bobbin and we just load the bobbin so that when you pull the thread off the top there, it turns clockwise. Load the bobbin into here and pull the uh, thread into the little slot there under the spring. And I'll reinstall the bobbin case and I'll, as I say, I'll tip the machine back and show you what I'm doing here. But I'll just get that back in. Alright, and I'll tip the machine back. Okay, so what I did there when I removed the bobbin case is I just got my thumbnail under the little latch here, just like that, pull the latch out and remove the bobbin case like so. And then installing the bobbin case, just make sure that the, this latch here is horizontal with the bed of the machine. And you, so you can do this all by feel from uh, down under, I'll show you. So you can reach in with your hand and install the bobbin case when the machine heads down in the down, down position there. Uh, but here we can just make sure that, say, the uh, latch is horizontal with the machine bed. So we've got the, the hole in the bobbin case and the bobbin there goes onto this little shaft on the base there on the hook. Okay, and then just click it in and it's nice and secure in there. Now, while I've got the machine tipped back here, you can see that the uh, we've got an oil sump here. We've got a high and low mark here for the oil. We've got a uh, pump with a filter here, so that pumps oil through and automatically lubricates the system. So it's lubricating the hook system here, and then we've got a, an oil wick here to do the, some of the feed mechanisms and things like that there. It's all fully automatically oiled except for, so the only parts that aren't automatically oiled are some of these parts on the back here. I won't go through all of them, but there are oil points here on the back and there's some oil points on these linkages down here as well. So they're the only parts that aren't automatically oiled. There's an oil hole here as well. 
we have along this end here we've got a, a sight glass for the oil pump so we should see oil splashing in there and that's just to let you know that the oil system's working properly it's pumping oil that's what you want to see so i'll show you the top threading here we come in through this guide here we just wrap around so over the top and back through the holes so front to back there that takes out some of the twist and the thread there and then if we come across to this guide here we just come in similar sort of thing here from right to left in that top eyelet there come around the front and go in from right to left again this side here comes around just like so and then over the pretensioner there down through this eyelet here and then we come down through the tension discs here and then up and over the uh, check spring here under the this guide here and then pull in from right to left through that guide there and then we'll bring the take up lever right up to the top of its travel there as you would with any sewing machine really and thread from right to left down through this eyelet here from left to right and then this eyelet right to left and then through the thread guide here just above the needle and then thread the needle left to right it's got a fairly chunky needle in it I think that's a 160 so that's 1.6 millimeter thick needle and then we can pull the bobbin thread up so we do a full rotation so bring turn the machine in operating direction until the take up lever here comes right back up to its top position and that'll pull the bobbin thread up there like that okay and then we can just pull this right out through there like that so we've got the top thread coming down through the center of the foot there and the bottom thread coming up through the feed dog hole there and we're set to go okay so I've got an old pair of jeans here just cut the leg off and we've got a felled seam here that is two four layers of denim and we've got another one here which is just a standard seam overlocked seam and it's turned over that's three layers and if I double these over that means we're getting eight layers of denim there on this lump and we've got six layers on this lump here that one there ready to go here As you can see it just eats it up there and we can see there that it had absolutely no trouble with those lumps it just cuts through it like a hot knife through butter there there's the uh, back side there the white thread looking pretty good so yeah pretty impressive machine oops I'll just pull the thread out there And these machines handle lighter weight materials as well, you know, uh, within reason. So if we look at like two layers of denim here, I just uh, go down here on this two layers here. What you can do is you can actually uh, decrease the height of the stepping of the two feet here. You'll see that they step quite high. I've got it set quite high because I was wanting the machine to, you know, step over these lumps here. 
and if we have a look at the action there you can see the outer foot lifts there I'll get you in for a close look at this and then the inner foot lifts while the outer foot clamps and then the needle comes back down through the inner foot there and needle feeds with the inner foot. Now you can decrease the size of that stepping motion there. If we have a look in behind here there's this adjustment here. I've got it on the maximum here at the moment but if you undo the lock nut here and slide this crank down that slot there that gives you a shorter um, lift on the on the feet there. I'll just get you in for a closer look here just brighten that up a little bit. You can see the action of the walking foot here so you've got the outer foot lifting there and then the outer foot drops down clamps the material then the inner foot comes up and lifts and steps forward and the needle comes down through the inner foot there and clamps the material and also needle feeds in unison with the feed dog and that process is just repeated there. I'll lift the press foot there so that you'll be able to see the, the actual feed dog down here, this is the feed dog you can see down under the plate there and you can see the inner foot here it moves in unison with the lower feed dog there and the needle bar does as well so it's needle feed you can see that motion there Now that's the slowest speed the machine will run at. Now I'll show you a little bit about the speed control here. So this is the slowest speed here. So nice and controllable. And the fastest speed is there. So you definitely don't want to get your fingers in the way. Okay, and we've got reverse here, this lever here, reversing. Uh, they do come with an automatic um, needle positioner too, so it will automatically position with the, either the needle up or the uh, needle down there. So that's, a, uh, that's called a synchronizer. So for controllability, see how controllable it is so you can do virtually one step at a time you know almost one stitch at a time so there's a lot of controllability there stitch length is uh, controlled by this knob here uh, clockwise there to come down in the numbers to decrease the stitch length and anti-clockwise to increase the numbers that's longer stitch length there. So over on the left at the top here we've got the adjuster for the presser foot pressure that's the outer presser foot there and this one here is the inner presser foot pressure there. Tension adjustment is just pretty standard for any machine really you just crank it in to increase the tension and undo the nut there to decrease the tension pretty straightforward okay just a, a couple of notes on the little controller box here the there's the on off switch there and we've got a needle up or needle down button here now that's only relevant if you have the synchronizer so that's the unit that uh, positions the needle either in the up or the down position and you can toggle between the up and down position there. Uh, if you press and hold this it changes the rotation of the motor uh, but this is set correctly for this machine. 
speed mode, this one here does a speed mode, so P, and if I push it, it's on program one, and if I push it again, it's program two. So program one is basically almost like a soft start. You get more time or more travel on the pedal uh, before the machine starts going and it's, uh, you know, towards its ramping up towards its full speed. So that's the slow speed. When you first push your foot on the pedal, just slightly, you get a slow speed and you get more travel with program one before it kicks into the faster speeds. With program two, uh, there is no, uh, the, you still have a slow speed uh, when you first touch the and push down the pedal just slightly, uh, but the higher speeds will kick in sooner as you push down. So that's almost, yeah, like a, a slow start in this position here. And then we've got our uh, speed setting here, this dial here. So 30 means 3000 stitches per minute, is what it's set to at the moment. If you push it more than once, it increments so that's 3100, 3200 right up to 4,000 stitches a minute, more, 4,100 stitches a minute, and then it drops down to 1,600 stitches per minute. So this machine is rated at 3,000 stitches a minute. So I'll bring it up to there, and that sets the maximum speed for this machine, for the machine head. If we take a look at what comes with the machine, we've got a couple of bobbins there, a few bobbins, a um, little oil bottle, a couple of screwdrivers, and some spare needles, size 160, uh, type DPX17. And I quite like this touch, this manila type folder here with the little uh, binder string here. And in there you get uh, the manual and a Hitex cowboy brochure, cowboy sewing machines, so Hitex, and there's a, um, a brochure with all the different types of machinery that these people make here, and the manual here is, is pretty good, it shows you uh, how to install the motor, uh, technical specifications, setting up the belt tension. Oh, by the way, yeah, this machine doesn't have a built-in uh, direct drive motor. It has a uh, servo motor that attaches to the bottom of the table. And run, uh, belt runs up to the machine head. Just goes through the uh, belt guard installation, bob and winder, lubrication, filling the sump with oil trial run so you know manually oil before you uh, start using the machine so you have, you actually have to take the uh, faceplate off here and um, oil this these areas that they've pointed out here uh, adjusting the amount of oil that's delivered to the hook oil pump uh, replacing the needle uh, I was talking about uh, tension adjustment here um, threading, more threading, wadding a bobbin, stitch length, take up, adjusting the press foot pressure, bobbin tension, take up spring tension there, and adjustment, thread tension, pretty standard fare really, and then it starts getting into the more technical sides of things, timings, uh, hook timings, clearances, uh, feed dog installation and setting. So yep, stitch length error adjustments. Yeah, technical, more technical side of it here. It's pretty in-depth, it's pretty good. Okay, and then a little bit of cleaning with the, they're showing a brush there, but I'd take the plate, I'd use a compressor and blow that out. Um, cleaning the oil pump filter, things like that. And then we've just got a, a parts, parts manual there. Pretty good parts manual. So that's about it for this one. I hope you found that interesting and or helpful. Uh, I'd like to thank my patrons on Patreon. Uh, thank you very much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. 
If you'd like to help the channel out, please uh, visit patreon.com forward slash sewing machines and take a look there see, to see how you can help the, the channel out there. Uh, also, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.